afternoon everybody, welcome to another episode of Casual Report Plus with your boy JT, um, Jam and Rob, can't be with me tonight unfortunately, they're very busy so taking the mantle, going to do an, a, a miniature sized chunk if you will, um, but as, as always with the Casual Report Plus, let's just crack on with it, there's a few stories today to talk about, but first we're going to talk about the charts, uh, the UK charts are in, the box charts I should say are in, um, I always, as always, read from Christopher Dring at uh, GamesIndustry.biz. So the charts are as follows. I'll put my screen for you now. There you go. No new entries. But uh, number 10, Horizon Forbidden West. Number 9, Animal Crossing New Horizons. Number 8, WWE. Number 7, Grand Turismo 7. Number 6, Mario Kart 8, the game that won't go away. Number 5, Fever 22. Number 4, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Number 3, Pokemon Legends. Number 2, Elden Ring. And number 1, Kirby and the Forgotten Lands. Uh, fair play to Kirby, to be fair, but this is obviously Christopher Dring at uh, Games in Shop Biz. Let's go a bit deeper. Um, Kirby and Fat Lands held number one for the second week running. Um, it's a Nintendo Switch game, comfortably retains the top spot after sales fell 43% week on week. Uh, for, uh, the first 3D Kirby game and the fastest selling game in the franchise by a long way. Um, yeah, I've never bought a Kirby game, to be honest. I'm not sure if anyone watching has bought a Kirby game, let me know. If you have, I've played them obviously because I've been on subscription services and friends have had them and stuff, but I've never, never bought one to be honest with you. Um, already the fourth best selling game in the Kirby series in the UK, so congratulations to them. It looks good though, I did play the demo, it looks, it looks, and it, it has potential for me to be honest. But you know, I was waiting for Mario Strikers at this point, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, so elsewhere, Elden Ring actually rises a spot to two. That's good. Uh, despite a 22% sales drop week on week. Meanwhile, Pokemon Legends rises to number three after a 9% drop. One of last week's new releases, Tiny Tina's, fell from two to four. Um, the game's second week sales are only down 38%, which is strong performance for a core game in its second week. Uh, the majority of Tiny, Tiny Tina's sales have been digital so far, and this chart does not factor in download sales. That's true. That's like 75%. In the UK last week were um, digital, so tell tell another story here, to be honest. But let's go deeper. Uh, meanwhile, Bethesda's Ghost by Tokyo has gone from eleven to twenty three. That is looking a bit rough. Seventy percent drop. I mean, I I hope that game would do better because it just did look interesting. But from what I hear from the reviews, it is a bit. It's a bit. Oh. It's one of them. It's going to be a, another um, Deadly Premonition, I think. No, it's not as bad as that. It doesn't look as bad as Deadly Premonition, don't get me wrong, but you, you understand what I'm saying. Um, there's just one new game in the top 40 this week, Crusader Kings 3 on console, which also on Xbox Game Pass, I believe. Um, the game just about marks the chart at number 40, 81% of sales on PS5 and the range from Xbox. Finally, number of promotions, push games up the charts this week. GTA the Trilogy is up seven places to 13 um, 57% rise in sales and Football Manager 2022 re-entered chart number 15 obviously due to probably a sale somewhere on some website something or other do you know what I mean so round of applause there for the charts um, I mean no, I, no new releases I believe this week so no notable new releases I'm sure there's a game that come out that dropped on Steam somewhere which is very good uh, and I can't wait to play it but we'll move on. Um, a game that Jam got today. Um, the reviews dropped, I believe, yesterday. What is it yesterday? I mean, the reviews dropped yesterday. Um, for this, it's like with Star Wars, obviously, and a bit of mither on this one. There's there's a lot of crunch, I believe, around the because Jam pre-ordered this game the day he pre-ordered his PS5, which was about two or three years ago. Do you know what I mean? And it's just been dragging its feet. Um, been a lot of crunch, been a lot of development hell on this one. I did worry whether it was going to be good, but it looks like it's got potential. Um, the results are in. It's an 84 Metacritic, 37 reviews, which is not bad at all. Um, you know, grand scheme of things, let's go. VGC, give it a 5 out of 5. Obviously, it translates to 100 on Metacritic scale. It says that it feels like TT knows this is very likely its last chance to do the series justice. And it's not only done that, it's created that what is the very best local game and frankly one of the best Star Wars games that's ever been made. Um, so we're, there's a lot of Star Wars games that are great, so you know, Fallen Order's good. 
Um, Knights of the Republic is one of the finest video games of all time. Um, one of the best twists ever, by the way, in, in a video game. If you haven't played that game, it's about, it's always on sale on Steam. Just just wait it out, and you'll get it for two quid. Just go and play it. Um, but, you know, there's a remaster, remake thing on the way, so I might as well maybe wait for that. But if you want a bit of a taster, I recommend that to anyone, to be honest. Um, let's have a look at this. Um, there's only one yellow, so let's read the yellow. I do like to... I like to be fair, you know what I mean? Uh, Gamer dot no. Is that a... A foreign speaking website Danish I believe or probably Norwegian to be honest I'm thinking about it I saw the the accents above the um, the A's and the nah never mind Norwegian because I know what a noob um, the Skywalker Saga is at its best when it delves into its more linear tightly designed sections as open areas are devoid of life and exciting missions to spend your time on uh, yeah so what I think it means though is that this one's more open than the past Lego games like the uh, Lego Star Wars, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, and Jones and Jones, all that shit, Batman. I um, believe there's more open areas, and it's. I mean, potentially, yeah. Uh, but it is what it is. Let's read a mid screen one as well, just to keep everyone on the set. This was 75, Goddess Geek. Is that a 75 or a 7.5? It doesn't matter. I'll try and find the actual score for you on the website. 7.5 um, Same thing basically, but uh, got to get Lego Star Wars the Skywalker Saga It's filled with some good ideas and there's some nice mechanics despite looking amazing and feeling authentic The camera angles and repetitive gameplay were great on some people It is what it is. I mean I'll probably check this game out eventually. I don't think I'm day one like Jeremy's I'll get his thoughts on it um, When I next speak to him I'm sure he'll have a lot to say about it as he tends to do on Star Wars stuff but I digress, we'll move on to the big stuff now, the stuff that matters, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, there's been, there's a return, there's, there's back from the dead kind of thing. Um, Monkey Island is getting a sequel, Monkey Island oh, 3 technically, right? Return to, uh, return to Monkey Island is coming, courtesy Devolver Digital and... Um, Lucas film games or Lucas Lucas Arts games, whatever they're called. Um, this looks like fantastic. You know, you can hear it now. Um, but it looks brilliant. Um, the sound design. It looks like Super Giant Games ish with the art style. Um, that sort of. I mean, it's good. It's, it's recaptured the the style of the first games greatly, I think. And for a Home and Kellen game to come out now. Ron Gilbert's back by the way which is always nice to see when he's probably been begged as I wonder if it, which way around it is if he's been but it's Return to Monkey Island it's called it's coming out this year um, no date just a year which you know I'll take a year to be honest um, music by Michael Land Peter McConley and who's the other guy sorry it's gone off the screen uh, Clint Clint somebody two seconds Clint Bajakian but I don't know. Sorry, Clint, mate. Um, and so on and so forth. But yeah, I mean, Monkey Island's one of the great point and click adventure games of all time. It's funny, genuinely funny. It's hilarious. And part of the combat is, is like, I've not played it for a hot minute. You'll have to forgive me. Um, but I believe it, it's very hard to, to lose or die or whatever because it, it's just the way it's done. It's, you never feel stuck. Well, I never felt stuck anyway. Probably because I'm a professional gamer, but it is what it is. You know, Monkey okay, Island return to oh, the logos on the screen. I've, sorry, I've turned it off for logo come up, but there you go. Um, yeah, get that while we can. I'm looking forward to see the reception this gets in 2022. Do you know what I mean? Like, if it if it's like overstayed its welcome, do you know what I mean? Um, perhaps a lot of gamers now probably not old enough to know what this is or why it's important or you know the the influence it has over like especially comedy in video games as a whole it's interesting to see how that takes to people i'm sure it's going to be great but whether it'll stick um and we'll get return to monkey island 2 return you know it is what it is but i digress i'm interested Hmm, I'm interested, but we'll move on. 
Can't wait for that one. I hope to see more gameplay soon. Hopefully in the E3 season. Not that E3 is not happening, but in that sort of season, we'll see potentially a, a trailer that dives into that. Excuse me. Moving on. Unreal Engine Five is out now. So all you video game designers, developers, um, programmers, go and download it. You've probably already downloaded it. To be fair, you're probably way away, way ahead of me. I'm reading from Matt Kim, IGN. Says two years after Epic Games revealed Unreal Engine Five of gorgeous tech demo. I can't believe that was two years ago. By the way, um, for the 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 fucking the humanoid figures all over the place and that fucking ruined thing. It was sick. Um, the next gen games engine is officially available. It's been released alongside a playable shooter, Lyra. Um, and it goes on. Unreal Engine 5 is Epic's latest in the line of game engines available to game developers, big and small. I mean, I think I've got Unreal Engine on my computer somewhere. I'll be able to see what's going down. I stare at it blankly for a few hours and then turn it off, not look at it again. Can't wait. Uh, while the release of a new game engine isn't typically news that excites folks until well video games are getting made with them Epic first revealed Unreal Engine 5 with a blockbuster tech demo and I believe the um, Matrix forever what was the Matrix thing called I can't remember what the Matrix thing was called the Matrix Awakens that's it this on this article as well thank you Matt Kim um, it was beautiful like um, I could put it on screen for you but it, some of these screenshots were fantastic do you know what I mean? Um, and I'm interested to see. Obviously, games aren't going to come out looking like that straight away out, out the gate. It obviously takes time for developers to get to know the system, get to know you know the processes, and get the most out of the games on the systems that they develop for. Um, I'm interested to see if this is probably a newbie's question, but I wonder if the Switch should. You probably can develop with the Switch for it, and I wonder how them games look. Um, I know the RE engine Capcom use, they, they get the most out of the Switch hardware. I'm um, interested to see how this holds up on the Switch as well. Um, so, uh, these include, ha bleh, sorry, they released a like a, te a sample game as well called Lyra. Um, this is just a very, I say it once, I don't want to say generic, but um, they're the characters in the game. Very generic, not generic, but you can sort of. It's a good base for developers to, if they were making a shooter, they could remove assets and swap things around and mess around. I'm sure they I'm sure that's what most studios are doing now. Who've downloaded it, just you know, taking up doing homework. I guess I'm, I'm not sure if you do homework, but you know what I mean. They'll they'll be in. They'll be temp tempering with things. They'll be having a look around. Um, window shop, not window shopping, but you know what I mean. Um, there's also been a uh, there's two other things at this as well. Sorry to sorry to go there, but there's another tech demo by Coalition. I've not put it on me list. I'm so sorry. Uh, we'll, we'll keep going. Coalition, obviously, uh, Gears of War fame. Um, this video, I'm going to put it in. I'll show it on the screen now. It looks very Gears of War. Um, like if you told me this, not this, but uh, if you told me this was like the tease for a new Gears of War game and this was a new Gears of War character I believe you 100% because the dude looks very Gears of War-ish it looks very barrenish wasteland not much there and when you get to the enemies you'll see exactly what I mean but you see he, could, he fits into Gears of War all day long do you know what I mean his character he's got a nice beard obviously um, the facial animations the skin texture I mean it's very impressive stuff I mean I always say Oh, two seconds. Let me just get to the uh, the enemies. There they are. Sorry, two seconds. I've gone too far. One too far. Um, got this lot delighting effect as well. You can see there. Um, but there you go. They they straight out of Gears of War. Obviously, coming from the Gears of War studio, you you'd probably shrugging shoulders, but it's probably a, a, an insight into what they're about, and you know, because they are working on Gears Six. So put your house on it. Do you know what I mean? Um, whether it's going to look like that, probably look like good. But like I said, we've got to like disperse over all the systems, so perhaps it's going to be tempered a bit, held back, shackled a little bit. Um, hopefully the, the engine can get the most out of the systems it's on, like I said, with the Switch, um, which is good. It's good. Uh, very impressive stuff. I'll put that in the description. I'll forget. I'm sorry. 
Um, and also, um, Crystal Dynamics have revealed they're working on a new Tomb Raider game using Unreal Engine 5. Bum, bum, bum. Shock horror. I mean, um, the only shocking thing about this is it was revealed here. Uh, to be fair, I've not played the... I played the first one a bit of the new Tomb Raider games. Um, from what I understood, it wrapped it up, the trilogy, up quite nicely. I'm, I'm unsure whether, you know... It is what it is. I'm re you're a gamer I'm reading from, by the way. Sorry, I've, I've jumped around a bit. As I like to do. Tom Phillips, our main person over there. Um, yeah, so new to Chris Dynamics is incredibly excited about the future of Unreal and how it will help us take our storytelling to our next level. That's why we're proud to announce that our next Tomb Raider game is being built on Unreal Engine 5. Um, and obviously there's a... Crystal Dynamics dude, I, the, his name eludes me. I'm so sorry, um, but he's very, he's very excited and down for the next two red again. Which you know, them two red games are cool. It is what it is, though. Um, but again, <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I like it when game developers do this to say, work on this, leave us alone, turn about, as opposed to what being all secretive like. Just tells what you, I mean, I do like the excitement though of, of like a stone cold shock reveal, but at the same time, this takes a lot of pressure off the developers if they say we're making the new Tomb Raider game, leave us alone, we'll show it you when it's ready, we'll see you later. And it's like, okay, cool, see you later. Um, the yeah, Shadow Tomb Raider came out four years ago, Jeez, they're also working on Perfect Dark as well with Microsoft, so. I hope they don't spread themselves too thin. And obviously, Micro um, Avengers as well. Whew. Man, remember that. That was rough. But I digress. Looking forward to Unreal Engine 5. I've seen, obviously, more to talk about. I, get to, I don't want to get too technical because it'll be here all night, do you know? <laughs> um, moving on. Xbox Game Pass. Old Faithful is back. Uh, read from the xbox.com uh, they're the games I'll go through them now quickly um, available today Cricket 2022 um, and LB The Show 2022 that's funny because uh, the English bat sport and the, the American bat sport together at last um, LB The Show again it's coming out on Switch and you can cross play I mean it looks rough on Switch but I'm, I'm, I'm about cross play and being able to cross save and do all that shit so and is it cross save player cross save whatever you know what I mean um, coming soon Chinatown Detective Agency uh, Chinatown Detective Agency is a cyber noir point and click adventure blending stunning retro design with innovative mechanics boom 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 that's April 7th Dragon Age 2 EA Play in the Cloud is April 7th as well Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare EA Play in the Cloud April 7th Solar Squadrons EA Play in the Cloud April 7th Boom, boom, boom. Um, Life is Strange, True Colors, uh, Cloud, Console, and PC for April the 12th. Uh, they never grab me, Life is Strange. I might, might give them a go, but they never grab me. Panzer Core 2, uh, April 12th, that's on PC. The Dungeon of Nahulbeck. That's a French game, I believe. I think it's like a dungeon crawler game. That's coming April 12th on PC. I'm not sure if it's on console now. Um, Lost in Random, this one looks cool. I was going to get this. I, I've been eyeing this up since I first seen it at EA Play last year. Year before, I can't remember. Um, I've been eyeing up in the sales and all that. Uh, I'm glad it's on Game Pass because you know what's going down. That's going out April 14th. Um, it's coming to Game Pass April 14th, I should say. I'm sorry. Um, and DLC updates. Anvil Vault Breaker Season 1. That's a twin stick thing. Um, that's available now. Microsoft Flight Sim World Update 8 available now. Microsoft uh, Minecraft Preview with that's the um, ray tracing thing in it. Uh, that's now PC Game Pass. Sea of Thieves Legends Week available until April 11th. Um, the perks Paramount Plus. Don't know what I'm going to do in the UK. We don't care. That's available now. Marvel Unlimited three month trial available now. That's the comics online thing. Uh, Black Desert Console. I don't know. Apex Legends console, endless possibilities, weapon charm available now. And leaving, you've got MLB The Show 21 on April 15th, along with Rain your, on Your Parade, Long Dark, Pathway, and leaving April 18th for Zephyr 2019. So, for me, 
it's a there you go kind of month. Do you know what I mean? Um, a lot of cloud stuff coming, being added that's already there for most people on console or PC. Um, Life is Strange is a good addition. Lost in Random as well, good addition. And that um, Dungeons of Narrowback. Sorry, I can't say that word. That was interesting. Um, so yeah, it keeps the water, keep the water flowing. Do you know what I mean? Keep it coming. Um, pretty good. Uh, but moving on. Last but not least, on April Fool's Day last Friday. Was it Friday? Yeah, it was Friday. Um, Rivals of Ether did their rival. It's yearly thing, I believe now. Rivals Direct, where they it started as a piss take, but then as the years went on, it's sort of got more and more serious. I don't want to say serious, but more and more official announcements were, were coming and. Rivals of Ether is getting quite deep, man. I, 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 I like the game a lot. I think it's cool. But the problem is you never find a game, especially in the UK on our, our servers and that, you can never really find a game online. Um, but they did a Rivals Direct thing. It was on YouTube. It's fantastic. I watched it the other day. Just going to run through quickly. There's there's a few jokes. Be able to fools. There's a few gags like the Sam Burt plushie. I'm, I'm reading from Smashboards. Um, Zediglet. Oh, Zediglet, but it's Zediglet. You have to sort of put your emphasis on it because it's uh, decent sounding, but we're going to go there. Um, so the Sandbird plush available now. Um, Orcane, which is this dog dolphin thing, um, who's one of my main characters, by the way, in uh, Rivals, is joining Frame Makers, which is another platform fighter. Um, and Dungeons of Ether is getting, is a thing which is coming. Um, the trailer looks really good. It's like a top-down... I'm going to put the trailer in a second for everybody, actually. Um, a Dungeons of Ether also retrieved trailer revealed in this year, in last year's Rivals Direct. Dungeons of Ether is an upcoming turn-based dungeon crawler set in Rivals of Ether universe. So there you go, dungeon crawler, similar to that. Um, the Hobeck game. Um, but yeah, that was good. Uh, October 25th, that comes out. And The Daddy... Rivals 2 has been I mean, it was pretty much I'm going to put it on the screen now but it was pretty much confirmed anyway um, it looked very good, very clean very shiny um, very diff <laughs> I mean it's Rano and Sle Le Le Lettenberg something like that but I mean it looks fresh, it does look like it plays exactly the same but with new shiny new graphics which I'm not going to complain because it's one of the reasons you play Rivals of Ethers because of the, the tight sort of gameplay that it offers and it is very it's, the, it's my favourite platform fire that isn't Smash Brothers I, I, I'm pretty sure it is um, it's so good like um, especially like Claren and Ori's in this the first one I hope, hope Ori comes back um, I do hope Ori comes back and obviously Shovel Knight making it off Shovel Knight will be back. Hundred percent Shovel Knight will come back. Um but they might do Yacht Club's new game, the mouse, I've forgotten what it's called. Mina, Mina. Um that might come back. That will be fresh. We'll be chilling, do you know what I mean? But it is what it is. I mean, you know, it looks the attention to detail looks good. Um the I mean, 2024 though, which is quite a way. Perhaps we'll have some um, uh, beta, not betas, network tests and stuff. Hopefully, we'll be able to have a quick go. Be good. I'll play anyone who wants to do it as well. So there you go. But, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I've got time for today. Um, thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. I appreciate you very much. Um, hopefully, we'll have. We'll, probably, we'll be on Twitch on Thursday. If, it, if it's just me, we'll do a um, arcade edition. We'll we'll play some games or something. I'm sure you are an Elden Ring. Do you know what I mean? I'm just fucking slicing and dicing on that game. I am. Um, yeah, but if you yeah, if you can like, subscribe, share with your friends, join in the conversation below. Let me know what you think about everything. You know what I mean? Anything in the world you want to talk about? We'll, we'll have a chat. Um, join the Discord is what it is but um, thanks so much for guys and keep it casual i'll see you next time bye bye